the Arado 234 blitzes its way into War Thunder. Let's check out this legendary jet bomber. The history of the AR-234 could be an hour-long video in its own right, and I'm only going to hit the highlights here. The plane has its origin in a 1940 project to develop a high-speed scout plane that could fly reconnaissance missions over England from bases in continental Europe. The design was basic and conventional, but it used the new and highly unconventional turbojet engines, which were just starting to become available. The aircraft went through an extensive development phase, testing out a dozen or so engine configurations, engines themselves, and changes with the internal cockpit. The initial design work focused on a combination of four jet engines mounted under the wings and, if you can believe it, detachable wheels that would be ditched after takeoff, leaving the plane to land on a retracting skid. Well, after early tests proved how much of a problem that was, the skid idea itself was ditched, and the aircraft went through another slight redesign to include conventional landing gear. As with many late war German aircraft projects, there were almost two dozen versions designed or proposed, along with quite a few one-off examples built and special production runs of low single-digit numbers of niche models of the plane. What we're looking at here is the AR-234 B-2. This was the most produced bomber version of the plane, and was the first jet bomber in the world to enter production and see combat. The AR-234's performance amazed its pilots, as it was faster than anything else they had flown, was highly agile, and was basically untouchable if piloted well. Having entered service far too late to affect the outcome of the war in any serious way, the AR-234 nonetheless went into the history books and set the pattern for all jet bombers that would follow it. As a fun bit of trivia, the only surviving AR-234 is actually this same B-2 model and can be found on display at the U.S. National Air and Space Museum. In War Thunder, the AR-234 B-2 is frequently the first jet bomber players will encounter, either in combat or flying it just like in real life. The AR-234 B-2 doesn't carry any air-to-air -air weapons. This is strictly a bomber, and its loadouts are somewhat limited. You can choose either three bombs or one bomb in a few different sizes. That's it. Considering where this plane is in the tech tree, this ends up being a pretty light weapon load for a dedicated bomber, which significantly impacts how the plane can be used in missions. In my opinion, the light bomb load seriously handicaps the effectiveness of this plane overall, because the maximum potential damage you can do with it, and thus how many points you can score in an individual sortie, is quite low. You have to rely on flying back to base and then back into the action multiple times per mission if you want to rack up a good score. That's not a problem, just something to be aware of. The flight performance of the AR-234 is a little mixed. The plane has a great top-end speed for its BR, especially after it dumps its bombs and is flying home. It's a jet bomber, after all. And it's exceptionally maneuverable compared to other light bombers, and even some fighters, as it retains energy very well in most flight scenarios. However, it doesn't accelerate well in most flight situations, and War Thunder matches rarely give the opportunity to climb up to a proper altitude, so the plane's high ceiling is kind of a wasted strength. Of course, if you're flying this, the maneuverability and energy retention isn't going to come into play very often, unless you have buddies hanging out around you and you're just evading fire as the blue team takes out the guy hugging your tail. Otherwise, you're usually going to be better off just running away, so keep that speed up. Flying the AR-234 B-2 into missions is surprisingly fun, and honestly, that's what this plane is about. There are heavier bombers at this BR, and even fighters with basically the same or better bomb loads in addition to guns, so you're probably not flying this plane to try and top the scoreboard. Still, you can be effective. 
if you're flying air battles, you get the bomber spawn. So most players' flight pr profile is going to be to hit the first strategic target you can, run home, rearm with more bombs, then fly out for as many rounds of tactical bombing on ground targets as you can survive. After a rearm cycle, you're usually not going to get the chance to climb back to altitude. Honestly, it just takes too long, and there's probably fighters up there anyway. So, what I do is spend the rest of the mission at treetop level. Fast and low is the name of the game. Like, open the window and grab some acorns on the way by, type low. This can make it harder to spot you visually, and honestly, it's just more fun and breaks the monotony of bomber gameplay. When you take off after a rearm cycle, you spawn with rocket-assisted takeoff pods. As with a few other bombers that get the Rado pods, you don't actually need them to take off on most maps. And sometimes I just take them with me for a little extra speed boost if I find myself in a jam. Flying close air support is really where the fun with this plane is, though. At this BR, you're generally not going to be fighting player vehicles with IR-guided anti-aircraft missiles or anything, and if you keep your speed up, they'll have a really hard time shooting you down. Enemy fighters can be an issue, but again, keep low and you'll be harder to spot. Flying close air support in ground RB is, in my opinion, the role this plane really shines at. The light bomb load isn't as much of a handicap, since the airfields are pretty close to the battle, and sometimes you have to loiter to find targets anyway. The plane doesn't get a CCIP or anything, so you have to either switch to the bombsite view, which can be tricky to use when you're flying fast and low, or just wing it and do some blind bombing in the external view. Either way, when you do get hits and kills on this plane, it's immensely satisfying, and I have a lot of fun with it. As with air battles, you don't need the radar pods on most maps, so you can take them with you for a little extra oomph if you want. I even have a button on my Steam Deck just for that purpose. Visually, the AR-234 is a simplistic looking plane, but I've always liked it. It's got a very clean and refined look about it, and you've got two options for a paint job. In my opinion, the gray and blue one just looks amazing, and that's really the one I've always used. The mounting for the bombs was very obviously an afterthought in the plane's design. Remember, this was originally intended to fly recon, but I think the bomb mountings make it look a bit more aggressive. The landing performance of the AR-234 is okay, but you have to remember that the first-generation jet engines have really slow throttle response, so if you come in too slow and you need to crank the power, you need a few seconds of lead time, so try to be careful managing your speed on landing. Thankfully, the B-2 model here has the tricycle landing gear and not the wooden skid. You can drop landing flaps and gear at around 350 kilometers an hour, but there isn't any kind of a drag chute, so you're going to use your brakes to stop. The cockpit is interesting. The AR-234 has exceptional forward and side visibility, but the rearward periscope is kind of useless. Bombing from inside the cockpit view is difficult, and I'll admit I struggled a bit in VR. However, if you're flying the cockpit view on a monitor, it really does look great. To close out the AR-234 B2, this plane has good top-end speed for its BR, and it spawns with the radar pods after a rearm cycle. Also, it's a pretty small target, and it can be difficult to hit in combat. However, the overall bomb load isn't huge, because this is a light bomber. It doesn't have any ability to engage in air combat. And if you do get hit, the plane can be pretty fragile. The final verdict on the AR-234 B2 is that this plane is crazy fun to fly, especially as close air support, and it serves as a great introduction to jet bombers. If you don't get bored to tears by bomber gameplay, I think you should give this plane a try. You might be surprised how much you like it. As always, thanks for watching.